Hey guys, this is Echo Sowers with another tutorial for ADSR and MassiveSynth.com. If you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel and you want to do that, you can at youtube.com forward slash ADSR toots. So today's tutorial will be covering some tips and tricks on how to get your sounds in Massive to kind of fit in a mix better. Uh, these tips and tricks will work with uh, most genres, actually. So whether you do hip-hop, 80s, synth-pop, EDM, whatever, they'll kind of be applicable, which is cool. So I wanted to share with you uh, a few tips. And the first one is pretty simple. Obviously, noise. Uh, if you don't know, white or bright noise is a great way to kind of separate a sound in a mix. And I feel like most people, unless you're an absolute be beginner, will know that. And if you're a beginner, that's still cool. You'll Hopefully, you'll pick that trick that trick up as we go along but oh something you can do to take it a step further is with this sound I have pulled up in massive it's kind of like a, a plucky lead type thing right so I have a noise macro actually made so let me clear that so Let's say let's say you have a mix and you're using this as a lead and it's just not it's just not cutting through the mix. Well, what you can do is you can turn on the white or bright noise and you'll get. You can actually see in the mono field that the sound usually peaks about right there. And if I turn on the noise, the sound doesn't get a whole lot louder, but it is adding a little bit of volume to the sound. But what you're doing is with bright and white noise is you're adding basically bright and white noise cover the entire audio spectrum from 20 k from 20 to 20 k. So it's adding a bunch of of uh, harmonics to your sound, which can help it sit in a mix. So a, a trick that I like to use is I'll actually modulate the amp of my noise with an envelope that is kind of representative of the sound I'm using. So with a plucky lead sound like this, I don't need noise. I don't necessarily want noise on the full decay and attack, I mean the full decay and level of that decay on the whole sound. I would rather have it just on the attack. So what, I, what you can do is you can create an envelope and shape it towards your sound. So for this one, I made kind of a plucky looking envelope and I modulate the amp of the noise and simple as that. Now I'm getting the noise, but I'm getting the noise primarily on the attack of my note. So with a sound that maybe is being held out with like a, uh, let me turn the level up of this. So now if I was actually like holding out this note, maybe it was like a, Kind of electro lead or or dubstep lead, then maybe I would change I would change my actual shape on my envelope to maybe have the noise come in after the attack, and then the sustains of my of my notes are kind of having more of the brighter white noise. What that'll do is it'll just help separate your your sound from your bass, your kick, your snares, your hi hats, everything else that's going on. So I'll leave that on for now. I'll turn that sound down a little. And next thing I wanted to show you that's pretty cool is in this voicing tab, you have this pan position. So this is a goniometer. I usually butcher that word. So what it, what this section does is it shows you what's happening in the stereo field. So right now I'm talking. It's just in mono. I play a, a chord on here. Almost all in mono. Now if I turn this pan position on and just keep it uh, down here to the left where it is by default, You'll notice that there's a lot more audio happening in the left and right channels of the audio field. So if I turn this to back to the middle, I'm back to mono. And over here, same type of effect. It's just inversing. I think it's flipping the, f the phase differently. Anyway, that is a really cool trick for obviously spreading out your sound. So if you have a lead sound that's, that's just it's not sitting on top of everything it's kind of getting lost in the mix and turning it up it's not helping try this and then actually if you make two tracks say I duplicate this this track and in this track I'm actually gonna turn this to here so in this one the uh, pan position is to the left and in this one it is to the right now if you play both of these together and you pan them left and right you're gonna get a very very wide sound so 
arm to record on both of them, bring back up my meter, and I'll play something real quick. So now you have a sound that you're not getting aliasing or anything like that, which is nice because there's different settings. So sometimes if you copy and paste uh, massive patches and depending on your settings, you'll get like weird vibrato things happening in artifacts. So having the pan position knob one to the, all the way to the right and on the other instance of massive all the way to the left, you get you don't get those nasty artifacts and you get a really, really wide sound. So let's go back to one instance of massive here. Let me delete this one. And now in going back to this, I'm going to leave this, uh, I'm going to put it to the middle. And using that same idea we used on our, on our noise, where we have the amp of the noise being modulated by this envelope, which is, a heavy, which is a heavy shape on the attack, so there's more noise on the attack of our sound now, I can do that same thing and drag the crosshair of envelope one into here and drag down left or right. I'm going to drag it to the left. And now my sound, let me pan this back to the middle, now my sound is going to have more stereo representation on the attack of the note. See how it kind of went back to the mono? Now if, I, now if I turn this back all the way to mono, see it stays mono the whole time. Now here, wide, back to mono. That's really helpful. Think about using a pluck. Think about using a lead that you need. You want the attacks of those notes to be spread out wide, but you don't want to lose everything else in your mix that you just you, know, you spend hours mixing, like your bass, your pads, your keys, or anything else. It's a really good way to just to separate the part of the sound that you need to. Uh, with a pad, for instance, you could actually, if you have a slow moving attack like this, you could actually control where the attack of the note is. Uh, you could do either one. You could try having the attack where the, there's not as much volume to your sound be out wide or have it center and spread out wide as the cutoff filter and as the envelope opens up. So those are some really cool sound design tips that can, I think, really, really take a sound from being a cool sound to making a sound that actually fits in a mix really quick. So finally, last thing I wanted to show you was this trick I've been doing um, is I'll actually use this pan and I'll modulate with two envelopes. So I might take one, envelope two, drag that out all the way, and I'll grab crosshair for envelope three and drag that all, all the way. And you'll notice that there's slightly different shapes um, for envelope two and three. So I, I have a, let's see, let's make envelope two have a lot, little longer attack time. And we'll have envelope three be a short attack time, and we'll have it be a little quicker decay and level. So if I play now. My sound is really, really, really wide. Now if I turn this off. It's just helping spread out the sound a little bit wider. And you could also do that because by default it's, it's, it's attached to your amp mod. So you could actually do it with envelope 4 and just have the same thing left and right just to really spread out your sound. See how it's slanted a little bit? So now it's actually kind of not even kind of not even hitting, uh, depending on how far you dash down, it's not even hitting the stair the mono part of the field, uh, except maybe for just the first parts of the attack. But so those are some tips and tricks on how to spread out your sounds in Massive and really, really add some separation from maybe your leads, your basses, whatever it may be, and the rest of your mix. And if last thing, uh, this is pretty basic, but the EQ in Logic, I mean, uh, the EQ in Massive is great for doing your cuts and things like that. So if you have a lead sound, maybe turn down some of the low shelf and the boost and maybe turn up a little bit of the high so then you're not conflicting with your lower frequency instruments like your kick and your bass. And you can, of course, do the inverse where you can cut some of the highs and things like that. And you could have, and you can always use an envelope to kind of control those to have even more control over when the EQ is being cut and when it's being boosted. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com, head on over there. Bunch of cool Massive stuff. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.